Right, evening guys. Just took a uh, quick update. Is these, the old krill that I was doing, the coated. Now, I've been baiting with these for about, about the last week. Weeks, 12 days. And I found a, uh, whenever they first went down, I found a group of fish. There were six in, in that group and they, they were all, they, they weren't really very big fish. I said the biggest were probably about 18 pounds, which is a decent fish for that, that bit. It's, they're not, they're not the biggest fish. It, it's, it's, it's a nice pit to fish. The fish are really nice lookers. They're dark, they're, they're really black at certain times. So it, it's a nice place to fish and it's a, uh, it's a tricky venue. There's not many in there. So I am going to get a ticket for it this year. Now I've been baiting with the um, the feed baits of this this one, and they're they're pretty much identical to this. But the coat the coating on these is a uh, um, if it's not for us, it, the bait will go off. Ends the the and being in rock salt. Now they're in rock salt for for the reason of that if they're not they'll go off so if for, um, it's a great little tip there that if you if you've got a you put in a coating network obviously the the, the coated in in bloodworm they're air dried first once they've been air dried for 48 hours then i put them in in a um, a, a small amount of a bloodworm and krill which are mixed together and then i drop the bait into it and just keep turning around till every bait's coated and then once they've sucked the, the krill in and bloodworm in, then what I'll do then is uh, uh, is I'll, I'll wait till they're not far off dry, but they, they kind of get a sticky texture to them. And then I'll then I'll add the the, the krill in uh, krill meal in in dry krill meal. Now what I've noticed is that it tends to it takes it probably about. A week a week to 12 days um, about 12 12 days to, to go off if you, you don't you don't uh, you don't put rock salt in in the pop-ups so they'll take up probably about a, a week about 12 days to go off well that's not a problem for for, for myself it's I don't mind that at all it's be I love using rock salt anyway I use rock salt I love, I love a lot in my fishing so it makes no odds to me it's uh, uh, it's some of that I do anyway. All that rock salt's doing is it's sucking the uh, uh, the the moisture out of the bit. I'll just turn the tap off, guys. So all that rock salt's doing is it's sucking the it's sucking the uh, the moisture out of the bit, but it's also infusing the bit with, with with the salt, which which I love. Now I've had a few people ask me about will the salt a uh, uh, custom fish. The answer to that is definitely not. It, it, if anything, it, it will it will give you extra. It will get you extra fish. Fish love rock salt, and it doesn't matter what time of year it is as well. Don't don't be thinking that you can only use rock salt at, at certain times of year because it's absolute nonsense. The fish absolutely love the stuff. Now it, it, it's uh, so now they're caught in bloodworm, krill, and then a krill dry powdered krill and then pink rock salt now that's them ones so now they don't need freezing they're, they're fine as it is they're, they're well they're nearly a month old then and uh, and and they're, they're fine as you can see you know what i mean they're probably a month old so that's that's they're, uh, that's them ones now the next ones i've done for for one of the lads that i know he wanted some 12, some 14s, 12, 14s, and a, uh, he wanted some 12 or 14 millimetre baits. So I've talked him out of having the quarters because obviously he would have to add rock salt and he'd have to keep an eye on them. And it, it's, they it, it do smell nice, so they're a really nice bait. So I've t talked him into having the uncoated version. Now the uncoated version smells similar to they're the 14s they're the 12s those 12s will hold two two size six ridge monkey hooks up so the super boy and you've got coal dust in them 
and they were 14 millimeter arms. Again, they'd probably hold a size two ESP Raptor up, which if you've ever seen an ESP Raptor, there's a lot of metal involved. Now the thing with these is, they've got a, they've not only got Polaris pop-up mix inside there, there's also coal dust. Now the reason for the coal dust is I've had a few ask me this as well, is why why do I add coal dust to, to an already really, really good pop-up mix? Now in a normal situation, if that was a 16mm bit, I wouldn't, in fact I'd probably get away with it with that. Now the, the reason that I'm doing it is because the baits that he wanted are small. So he wants a size 12. But he's fishing for decent sized fish. So obviously you want a decent piece of metal. So if he latches into a decent fish he's not going to be worrying about that hook. So he can use a size, a size 6 or even smaller I suppose. He could use something smaller on him. Now, um, and that that's the whole point of, of the of the coat dust in them. The, the whole point of the coat dust is is um, it's giving that extra buoyancy, so you can use a bigger hook with them. So that that's the only real difference bet between those two. They are the they are the exact same bait, but just coated and uncoated. Now, what I should have done is. I should have got rid of these in rock salt to start with because people just do not listen to, to what, what you said to them you know what I mean I'm rolling the bait I, I know that they're going to go off if they're not if they're not treated right even if even if you air dry them they're going to go off it, it's it's a krill that it's krill that's in there and it's bloodworm it's, it's going to go off you know what I mean there's no preservatives in it when it's formed Bloodworm, farmed krill. It's it's not gonna it's it's gonna go off. So the only way of getting round that really is either to use a, a krill and bloodworm um, flavor, which is a, a a no no as far as I'm concerned, but. It, it, that would make them shelf. That would make them shelfy. It would also make them definitely less appealing to the fish, in my opinion. You're still catching them for definite. I use a lot of um, a, a lot of um, flavors like that, and and like the banoffee and all that. I use a lot of them. But the the difference is it, it is is just the attraction in it is is far far better. It's uh, you, you're not using anything synthetic flavors in any way. You're using as it would be on, on the bottom of the pond the blood worm you come across on the bottom of the pond is, is what what you've got in these so that that's the difference a difference in them now these have still got the same in but it's from a from a, a baiting company so it, it's more than likely being being um put in some well it has not more than likely it has it's been uh, treated in some kind of uh, preservative so it's been treated in some kind of preservative this one on now the, believe me the difference that makes is unbelievable to the point of like I said earlier I've been baiting with these now for, for, for a while and, and uh, the fish are still in the same area over a week they're still in the same area now I, I put in a two two kilos bags of the um, whale's breath one of them was crumb and the other one was all baits now the old baits i left some all and i chopped some in half so they were just halves really to push the bait further so i i, I put the old baits in where the fish was but gradually moved the baits further away to a drop off that dropped down and then I filled it in with krill so, that, so then they were, they, were, they, were, they were four kilo on that spot now the bait it must still be there under the leaves and and twigs and what have you like I've been running on about we now for a, for a good while to, saying that, that krill is definitely that, that the chrome and flake is definitely the way to go 
because the fish the fish are still in that area and, and, and they, they're drifting out and they're dropping down over where the bait is and it's smoking up so that tells me that there's still crumb there there's still flake there it's a lot of it is the dusting off off this will still be still be on on the pit bottom and, and the, the fish are, are still they're really really attracted to it they're going down and smoking the bottom up now now the reason i'm i'm, I'm baiting just off the fish is i'm not bothered if i spook them out of that area it, that that was my original intention was to spook them out of the area but they just didn't they just stayed there because they, you can't really get at them from any angles but you've got peg two pegs at either side but there's overhanging trees so you can't really get at them at any angle unless you get in the water and you'd, you'd fish kind of like that with your rods in water down to them. Now, it, it, it's pretty much impossible. It, it's, about four, it's about four and a half foot, five foot. So, for one, you need very, very long bank sticks. And the other thing, it'd be a nightmare getting in to get your rods at night. And you more than likely definitely would spook them if you were in and out of water, no doubt about it. It just would not be worth it. So, what I've been trying to do is I've been trying to spook them out of that where they are. Well, not spook them, but slowly to get them to drift out from under them trees and drift down that marginal slope. So so they can be, I can angle for them from a new peg that that, that I've, I've been really looking at now for a good while. I've seen a lot of fish deer over the over time I've been fishing on there. So it, it's, uh, I can fish for them from a peg, from the bank, just locked up. So the minute that the, the fish takes the, the bait and it hooks itself, they're not big fish in tree and so you can fish with your clutches locked tight. A bank stick down which down to the, the right hand side of where your cork handle is and then a bank stick down the left hand side where, uh, uh, probably just in front of, of where your, your buzzer is. So when the fish picks the bait up and hooks itself, shakes its head and it goes to mm. run, all that's going to happen is your rod is actually going to do that and it's going to hit either bank stick and it's going to pull it now if them bank sticks are in firm enough it's going nowhere not with 35 pound braid it in no way it's not going anywhere the only thing that can really give with that is is the hook and that ain't going to give either because it's for it's 35 pound m trap and n trap soft so it ain't going to go so it would be the oak and i've got great faith in, in ridge monkey oak so i can't see them going so that's that's my plans for for pulling them out of that area anyway but i'm just going to continue trickling that bait in until around about mid-march and then mid-march i'm going to eat them and i'm going to eat them good but i tell you what and i mean it as well if they're those fish the same fish are still there and there's no new fish drifting in when i go down and i go down there and I go for a, a, a session, I will keep my eye on it. And if they're the same fish that's drifting in and out, then I will continue to feed them, but I won't fish for them. I ain't bothered about catching. I've already had them. I've already had about, out of the six, I've probably had about about four of them, probably five of them. And I, uh, I ain't bothered about catching them again, you know, but I will still be, I will still put bait in for, for a while. A little bit of bait for a while just in case any new fish drift in when it warms up a little bit but if not i've got a backup swim that i've been baiting but obviously i can't see what's going on in that swim for the simple reason of it's about 60 yards out now it's in a swim that i really don't like looks of for the simple reason of i like the layout of this swim and how i can uh, um, how i can set up shop really how i can get get me home up and I can I can get on my rods sat sort of nice and nice and it's just a nice swim so I've been baiting that up over about 60 yards out now it's the only peg on there where I've had a really really nice when the leg goes down it's normally you normally get a drop but it's a little bit of a a silty drop it's you'll get a faint faint foot so it's a um, it's definitely definitely looking good down there for him but, but uh, I'm going to see how the first few weeks go and then if if it continues just to be showing me really these smaller fish that are in there then I'm going to uh, I'm still going to join 
Still gonna drink because I love it. But the, but the thing is, is that I won't be fishing it. I won't be fishing it much. Is I've got another venue in mind for that. It's just I'm I'm trying to build everything around getting to that venue as easy as possible. Now one of my mates has offered to borrow me a barra to, and it's a good decent barra, so it'll make things a lot easier for me to get to that pit. But it's a um, I think that's the next one in line. I think that's the next one that's going to be baited. Now, I know where they're going to be on that pit as well. It's a, it's a raised bar surrounded by pretty deep water. And when I say deep, I mean probably 35, 40 foot. Uh, but it's a raised bar. And it is just a slight raised raise bar. And it's probably 12 foot of water. Now, if you put a rod on top of that 12 foot, and, and normally you will have you will have fish. You will also have them on, on the... It, it, it ain't a gradual slope there, it, it's kind of a raised bar and then it drops. It's they never bike filled it, it were a pit they never bike filled. They run out of money so they never bike filled it, hence it's been 68 foot deep in places. In middle it's 68 foot deep, they just run out of money, they never bike filled it, which is uh, not great, but you catch carp out of, out of, out of that deep water and there it is Sarah, some people say you can't catch carp out of deep water like that yeah you can if that's what they used to if they were stopped in, in that pit at, at, at a very small weight like they were at about I think they were about 6 ounces to a pound some of the fish that I've seen um, that were stopped in there then they were them fish are used to them, that deep water and I don't care what anybody says it's pretty similar to, to pegs that uh, what you get what Steve Broadfishers like Cassian you know what I mean there's, there's certain pegs that the e fishers on there where, where do you the, I watched uh, uh, one that Simon Crow put on over there about Cassian it, it was like really old older uh, slideshow and, and video that he'd, he'd found in his loft during lockdown and I was watching it over there and he was saying how, how, he, how they were catching a uh, fish out of Frank Warwick were catching fish out of about 48 foot of water now it, some people think that that ain't even possible catching fish out of that depth of water if the fish have be, been in that water since they've been very very small six ounce in weight they they get used to them depths of water the fish I, I never understand it honestly I mean Fair play, like, the, the only reason that, that they're not in that depth of water is because everything needs light to to uh, to live. Blood worm, everything, all the different snails and all that, they need light to live. And they also need weed to feed on, or silt to feed on. Now, in, in six to eight foot of water, you're not going to get much penetration of light. You are going to get it get a bit of light but not much so you, you're not going to get weed growth in, in that de in that depth of water so that that then that that takes the natural food out of the equation but take my word for it if you keep baiting an area that is deep with bait on a for a long period of time you will catch carp out of it those carp honestly they were quite happily feeding deep water i mean i've had i've had them out of 40 odd foot of water it, it's uh and and it were a uh, a uh, uh, in minus two when i when i did you know what i mean and I, and, and, and that rod i never expected that rod to go but it, it went it, uh, in minus two middle of wind i think it, think it were about, around about december time january we were minus two and it went it just shows you that a uh, if if you if you if you put bait out there they, they will they will definitely definitely get on it and don't forget that that depth of water is uh, in 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 summer it is it is, takes time for that water to to eat up but in winter it also takes that water longer to cool down so they they do like that depth of water at certain times so it's it's just a a matter now we're just baiting that raised bar and, and see how we go from there. Getting, getting that uh, um, barra off my mate and see how we go. There you go, guys. That's the two versions of Wales Breath.